There is nothing more disheartening than looking into your shrimp tank only to see you have pests living in there. Whether it's Hydra, Planaria, Daphnia, shrimp tanks are easily overrun by pests. And in this video, I'm going to discuss the most common pests we find in our shrimp tanks and how we can deal with them. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Richard and I'm a fish and shrimp breeder based in the UK. So the first pest I want to discuss today is Daphnia. Now Daphnia are tiny little crustaceans that are also called water fleas. And they get the name water fleas because of the jerky movement they make traveling through the water. Now, the good thing about Daphnia is they are totally harmless to your shrimp tank. They don't cause any problems at all. They don't even compete for food really. Daphnia want to eat tiny, tiny particles traveling through the water. Um, if you're raising Daphnia commercially, you actually feed them green water, which is single celled algae floating around in the water. So whilst it can be annoying to have Daphnia in your tank, they don't actually cause any problems whatsoever to your shrimp. Now, a couple of years ago, I made a very foolish mistake. I came up with the bright idea of removing some duckweed from one of my outdoor ponds and placing it in with these goldfish. Goldfish love eating duckweed. The problem was I bought with it Daphnia. And ever since then, whenever I've moved, I then moved Java moss from this tank into this tank, from here to here to here to here. I have Daphnia in all my tanks now. I just can't get rid of it. I water change heavily sometimes to try and suck most of it out. You've only got to leave one or two individual Daphnia in the tank and before you know it, the population's back again. As I say, for us shrimp keepers, Daphnia are just an annoyance. They don't cause any problems at all. I'm not aware of any medications you might use to treat Daphnia. Although I have heard that dechlorinators such as Seachem Prime will kill Daphnia. Uh, again, apparently if you raise Daphnia commercially, it's very difficult to do water changes because if you use dechlorinated water, you kill the Daphnia. If you use tap water with chlorine in it, you kill the Daphnia. I've tried it a bit here, I've played with it, but uh, I've not had 100% success rate, but it, it's better than nothing. If you do have Daphnia, one way you can get rid of it is to simply introduce a small fish. Now, in these tanks up here, I have a single baby guppy that I've removed from a guppy breeding tank. I drop one or two into each tank and hopefully they keep the Daphnia population under control. And once they grow too large, I'll take them out, put them back in the tank and bring another baby and drop that in. Will they eat some baby shrimp? Probably. But if I don't do that, the population of Daphnia will just totally explode and uh, I'll be raising more Daphnia than I am shrimp. Now, pest number two is detritus worms. And in my experience, there are two different types of detritus worms we come up against. The brown ones, which live in the gravel or in the substrate, and the white ones, which tend to be more all over the glass and, and travel more freely throughout the tank. Now, detritus worms, again, they don't harm your shrimp. In fact, detritus worms are a natural part of a balanced ecosystem. When our fish go to the bathroom or they, they eat and they allow food to spill out, they don't finish it all, the shrimp come along and eat the fish poop and the uneaten food. When the shrimp go to the bathroom, snails come along and snails break down that poop even further. And then when the snail goes to the bathroom, detritus worms break their poop down even further. It's part of a balanced ecosystem. In our fish tanks, when we have detritus worms, and I would say almost every person watching who has a fish tank does have detritus worms, the fish tend to keep the worms under control. Fish will root around in the gravel, many of them, such as, as guppies, mollies, goldfish. They'll root around in the substrate and they are looking for tasty morsels such as detritus worms. Corydoras are particularly famed for their abilities to root through the substrate looking for live food such as detritus worms. Again, the problem is when we keep shrimp only tanks, we often don't have the predators in there to keep the detritus worms under control. Generally speaking, in my experience, detritus worms don't harm your shrimp in any way, but you can get to the point where you have so many detritus worms that they actually compete for food. Many of you will know I like to feed rapashi. Uh, I recently had a 20 gallon aquarium just for shrimp, a shrimp breeding tank. The detritus worms became such a problem in there. When I dropped a cube of rapashi in, after a couple of minutes, the shrimp would actually surround it. It was, it was bizarre, it was almost creepy. Hopefully we don't allow our shrimp tanks to get to that stage, but uh, it can happen. 
as a rule, detritus worms do not harm your shrimp in the slightest. They're not interested in the shrimp. They are detritus worms. They live off of the detritus. They live off of shrimp poop, uneaten food, bits of vegetation that are breaking down. Essentially, anything that, that they can come across. The best ways to deal with detritus worms, if you have them in your aquarium, is the best way is gravel vacuuming. That's fabulous in a decent sized tank. But if you try gravel vacuuming something this small, you only get a few inches across and you're out of water. It doesn't work very well. You can add a predatory fish, such as a couple of Corydoras, which will, will certainly bring the detritus, number, detritus worm numbers right down. Again, will they eat some baby shrimp? They probably will, truth be told. Although shrimp are pretty good at, at shooting out the way when, when fish come near them. I'm not aware of any good medications that work on detritus worms, especially when they're living deep down in the substrate. Most of our aquarium water circulates throughout the tank, thanks to the filters. But unless we're using something like an under gravel filter, the water, and therefore any medication, doesn't really get down to the deep layers to kill the detritus worms. So when I've been suffering with detritus worms in the past, I've got to the point where I was unacceptable. The tank had more detritus worms in it than anything else, and I ended up breaking the tank down, washing all the gravel, refilling, rebuilding the tank, and going from there. And that works fairly well, to be fair. Although one or two detritus worms always find their way back in. I, I don't know how they do it, but uh, you know, I don't think I've ever come across a fish tank ever that didn't have a detritus worm in it. Now, before I move on to the next two pests, both of which can cause problems in your aquarium, I wonder if I could ask a small favor. Only 25% of the people who watched my videos last month subscribed to the channel. Now, if you could take a moment to subscribe, if you haven't already done so, not only does it mean a great deal to me personally, but the larger I can grow this channel, the more videos I can create, the more entertainment and information I can bring to you. So please, take a moment and click the subscribe button. So, pest number three on our list can be a real problem, and that's Hydra. Now, Hydra are fascinating little creatures that tend to live on the glass of our aquariums, but they will also live on the, the rocks, the gravel, they'll live pretty much anywhere. And Hydra look like small stems with tiny little, well, tiny little tentacles coming off them, really. And they're one of the most fascinating creatures in the world. They're studied by science because scientists have what they describe as immortal cells. Essentially, you take a Hydra, you chop that up into tiny pieces, and each of those tiny pieces will become a new Hydra. A fascinating creature. However, the problem for us is Hydra do prey on the smallest baby shrimp. Hydra are essentially micro predators and they're waiting for tiny crustaceans, tiny waterborne creatures, including baby shrimp to swim by, at which point they will grab them and consume them. Now, the biggest problem with Hydra is how do we get rid of them? One method people use is to take a, when you're doing a water change, take a small piece of airline hose, get a siphon going and try and suck them up. But remember, if you break the hydra as you're doing that, you've essentially created more hydra in your tank. So another way we can try and remove the hydra from our tank is to add a predator fish. If you put something like guppies or mollies into your aquarium, they will happily consume the hydra. The problem here is, of course, they will also happily consume baby shrimp. It depends how much of a problem you feel the hydra are and whether or not you need to actually rid your tank of them. Now, one method I have tried in the past with Hydra is to starve them out. And if essentially Hydra populations bloom when you add lots of food. And this typically happens in fish uh, breeding tanks. So where we put lots of brine shrimp in or lots of powdered food, that's perfect for the Hydra. The Hydra love to eat brine shrimp and their, their numbers will blossom. If you hold back the feeding, they will die off pretty quickly. The problem is your shrimp also need to eat. So providing you have a tank with plenty of algae and plenty, it's a mature tank, so there's lots of biofilm, what you could try doing is just stop feeding your shrimp. Don't put any food in for a week or two. Your shrimp will find plenty of things to eat. Your shrimp will consume detritus. They'll consume the small starts of algae. They'll consume the biofilm living on the algae. Providing your tank is mature, the shrimp can go two weeks without being fed, no problem at all. However, the hydra will quickly start to die off. Now, whether or not you will completely eradicate them is another problem. But there are very few medications that I'm aware of that you can treat a tank for hydra that won't also kill your shrimp and snails. And that's the real problem. Now, pest number four 
is planaria. And planaria is the curse of all shrimp keepers. Planaria are tiny flatworms. They look a lot like detritus worms. You'll often see them traversing the glass. But planaria have very distinctive arrow-shaped heads. I mean, they're unmistakable. If you have a magnifying glass or if you can get your phone camera and zoom in on the small worms traversing the glass, if they're beautifully rounded at either end, they're detritus worms, no problem at all. However, if they have that distinctive arrow-shaped head, they're almost certainly planaria, and planaria will attack and kill shrimp. Now, fortunately, there are medications on the market that we can use to treat our shrimp tanks, and they will kill the planaria, but they won't harm our shrimp. And there's a product called Expel P by Fritz, which is talked about a lot on the internet. A lot of people have had great success with this product. You simply treat your aquarium and that will kill, well, it'll kill the planaria, but it also kills a number of other aquarium pests, many of which aren't a problem to your shrimp, but you could, you know, but it will still kill them, but it won't harm your shrimp. So if you find yourself suffering with planaria, my number one recommendation is to source some Expel P, treat your aquarium, follow the instructions completely, treat your shrimp aquarium, and it should solve the planaria problem. You may need to repeat dose, but follow the instructions and it should solve your problem. Now, there are of course other pests that can get into our aquarium, some of which are microorganisms, cause us no problems whatsoever, like mosquito larvae. If you ever have a mosquito lay its eggs in your aquarium and the larvae hatch out, well, they make fabulous fish food, so drop a fish in, they'll consume the mosquito larvae, no problem at all, or hook them out and put them in one of your tanks. I wouldn't leave the mosquito larvae because obviously they mature into mosquitoes. We can also end up with things like a dragonfly larvae. Now dragonfly larvae are a problem. They will consume shrimp quite happily. And we have had in one of these tanks here, we ended up somehow with dragonfly larvae in the, in the water and it set the breeding tank back several months. We, we didn't realize quickly enough we had it. Unfortunately, the damage was done. It's a case of seeing what you have, assessing whether or not it's a problem and then finding the appropriate treatment to deal with the pest. With the dragonfly larvae, it was simply a case of pick them out when we see them and drop them into the goldfish who loved them. Now, if you're enjoying shrimp keeping videos, I'll put another one up here that I think might be of interest. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Although I have heard that 